I'm gonna find a mask that covers the nose and protects the mouth also. <laughs> no one has invented a mask like this. I'm gonna try to create one. My brother, peace to the Lord. We're going to stand up. Is it low? Come on. It is on, right? No, it got a little better, huh? Amen. The book of Judges. Judges 6, verse 11, 12. I look like a fool with a mask on my chin. <laughs> Judges 6, verse 11 and 12. Judges 6. Amen? Did you find it? Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty men of valor. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, this passage is a passage very well known to us. It's a passage that is well known in the Christian circles because it is a passage that is very rich in revelations and also a passage that brings many teachings for spiritual life. And one of the greatest teachings that we can approach tonight is the fact that G the Gideon had found something that none, no one else had tried. The people of Israel and their families, they were under a judgment from God for seven years. They, there have been seven years they were growing weaker more and more materially speaking because everything that they did all the work human work all the all the work that they did for their sustenance was being stolen the livestock the the farms the product of the farm and every day if you read uh, in the beginning, uh, verse 6, the Midianites, the Amalekites, they would come in the moment of their harvest, in the moment in which they were already, after all the work that had already been done, after all the labor, everything that was had been harvested, when it was time for them to take advantage of the labor, that they had done, the enemy would come at that moment and would steal everything. Imagine if you lived like this for seven years, everything that you did, the result of all your labor, of all your effort, after uh, the length of a year, you lost the entire year. Imagine. You think, oh boy, I was unable to pay anything. I, I spent a year trying to put money on the back on the bank. I worked and worked and was not able to save any money and they make a, a balance of the year. And then that's what was happening for seven years for the Jewish people. And many times my, our lives, it is very rushed. And many times we have our own responsibilities. We have this, we have to work, we have to take care of the family, we have to bring our children to school, we have to do this. There's, there's no way for us to wait for, for someone else to do this for us. Each fa family has, has their own responsibilities. 
And this many times steal our time from uh, seeking the Lord or praying because we depend of what is material. We don't live for the material, but we depend on it for our sustenance. We, you don't want to be a bad example for your family, for your children, so that you need to work. But there comes a moment in which we need to prioritize what is spiritual because the spiritual for the Christian, for the servant of God, needs to govern the material and not the other way around. Because if you allow the spiritual in, in second place in your life, you will work, you will get tired, you will grow older, and you, see, you will see no profit. Because everything that you will do thinking only on the material, the enemy of our souls, the enemy, he will come and he will steal your blessing. He will steal your dream. He will steal your project, your plans. Not only yours, but of the, your, your entire family. A project that you plan for your children, you're going to put in school, he's going, this and that, and you work, and you work uh, extra time and put your children in school, and you go there with so much work to pay everything, then you your child graduated, and then he thinks he says, "No, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> Look at what a misery it is." <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, it's not for me. I wanted something else. Four years and you working hard to pay, working like crazy. You and your wife limiting yourselves, not buying things, not going on vacations and trips, then your, your child, after graduating, he says, oh, I want something else of life, on life. And that's what happens sometimes. You want to beat him up. If you do this, you go to prison. So you need to you know, swallow dry and pay your debts and move on. And sometimes, and why is that? Because the material many times comes in first place. And here you were going to see the situation of Gideon. Gideon, when he realized, uh, uh, noticed what was happening, Gideon, he discovered a miracle, a mystery. He discovered something that was prophetic. Gideon did something that no one else had done in the past. He let go of what was the tradition was was what was the culture what, what was rational and he began doing something different and when he did that what happened the angel of the lord went there saw him doing that and said the following look gideon you scored high you did something that was really impressive. The Lord is with you, man of valor. And my brethren, every time that we turn to the spiritual, every time that we do what is spiritual, the Lord is pleased with us. Every time, every single time. Throughout his entire life, Gideon learned the following. The wheat needs to be worked on the threshing floor. He had a, his little farm there, and he planted wheat. And every time when it was, came time to the harvest, he would do that. He would harvest the wheat. He would bring to the threshing floor. It was the backyard, surely, of his house, of his farm. He would spread the, the wheat, spread so that the sun would dry it up. When everything was dry, he would work on the, the wheat, separating the shaft from the wheat and the grain. And when all the process was done, the grain was already separated from the shaft. The enemy of our souls, he, he wants to have everything easy. When everything was clean, surely even the threshing floor was wiped away. 
Oh, so then when you are ready to do the cake, so because the wheat was a basic source of food, the bread was made and cakes, everything was made out of wheat. And when everything was ready, stored and ready, the enemy would come and steal it. But he, Gideon, thought, this time I'm going to take the product of my harvest, I'm going to go into the wine press. The wine press it was another area. The wine press was another location where they would stomp on the, the grapes to produce wine. Uh, the, the farming of, uh, of the grapes to produce wine uh, was cultivated and already harvested when was then then they would put the the grapes on inside of the wine press then they would stomp on it and produce wine so then Gideon put his wheat inside of the place where they would stomp on the grapes and when the angel saw this he said to him the Lord is with you Gideon the Lord is with you my brethren this act was a prophetic act of Gideon because Gideon has learned a mystery he has found found out about something that no one had discovered yet he had done something that no one else had done because that act was a spiritual act was a prophetic act that would point out to Jesus this sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary the wheat we know that is what the wheat does what bread the word the wheat produces bread bread comes from wheat the word of god that's what we have here i have in my hands here and many people do not give enough worth to it and why is that because today people are they are continuing to work the wheat on the threshing floor many times people stop reading the word and seeking the revelation from the Lord seeking the mystery that is within the word in order to read a book many times no a um, secular book something that someone else read the understand of someone regarding the Bible or regarding a special specific passage of the Bible many people do this and why is that why is this dangerous because the word is is now mixed with the human understanding. It is being handed down to you from what is inside of the mind of man and not what comes from the mind of God. When the, the word is worked on inside of the threshing floor, threshing floor speaks about what? No, on the wine press. The wine press speaks about the sacrifice of Jesus, the joy of spirit, the joy of salvation, the wine the power of the Lord Jesus, when the word is being worked on, is brought in the spirit, is being understood in the spirit, being lived in the spirit, the angel comes and says, the Lord is with you. And every time that we begin to do something spiritual, the Lord is pleased with us. Every time that you in your house you act in a spiritual way. You stop doing what is rational. Gideon had as a point. It is a point in which he, it changed his life. He stopped doing what was customary and began to do thung, uh, something that was spiritual. When the mystery was revealed to Gideon, when the mystery that is in the Word, the mystery that is in the Gospel, was opened up to Gideon, the Lord was pleased with him. So then, many times when you are at home or at work and you act in a spiritual way, the Lord is pleased with you. The Lord goes to you and says, the Lord is with you. That's why, my brethren, it is important that we as Christians, we who live in the church, we need to act in a spiritual way. Because when we live like this, the, en the enemy of our souls doesn't see. He obfuscates the eyes of the enemy. He can never imagine, oh, this person, 
this individual acting in a spiritual way, he can never imagine this. But then you go and you silence the enemy and you become a blessing, not only for you, but for your family members, for the ones who are around you. You become a vessel of blessings, an instrument in the hands of God, a blessing for the ones who are around you. Gideon, he was this. He, Gideon was salvation for his people, not only for him, for his family, but the entire Israel, because that changed this action of Gideon, this act of Gideon, what he did changed the history of Israel. That's why it is important that we act like this, to let go what is human, let go what is something that is normal for us to do. Sometimes a person has a, a bad temper and you fight with them, the wife and kids and at work, fight with everyone. But look, pray to the Lord, say, say Lord, change my life, change my being. Sometimes I like to say something and my, my blood boils, and then you need to say, ask the Lord, Lord, change me. And when we do this, we are showing to the Lord that what is spiritual is more important. The Word of God teaches teach us this. And Gideon now, he goes and he does exactly what was was the will of the Lord and the Word of God when it is lived, when it is preached in the Spirit, it does not harm anyone. Sometimes you you may have got uh, hurt with someone saying something, maybe inside of the church, inside of this spiritual environment that may have hurt you. It was not a word that was worked on, on the wine press. Surely this word was worked on the threshing floor, mixed with the, the will of the man, with man's own self, selfish interests. And maybe if you got hurt with what is the gospel and what is this environment, it was not something from this period. It's not man's failure. It was something that was rational, something that was customary from us humans. But when we begin to live in a spiritual way, we begin to work the Word of God, the Gospel, the salvation of Jesus. When we live it in the Spirit, when it when we leave it in the wine press where the blood of Jesus has power to operate, to deliver, to transform, when where the Holy Spirit has control of our, the way we speak, uh, on the way we think, no one will be hurt. The result of this is what the Holy Spirit is doing. He's preparing the church for what? To meet with Jesus. That's why my brethren, we need to understand this because we live a time which is the time called soon. Oh, we should not be what should prevail. We need to enter into the time of God, leave our own time and enter into what is the prophetic time and learn the mystery which is beyond the ladder the Word of God is this mystery. Jesus is this mystery. And that's what Gideon found out. He was living in, in the Spirit, allowing the blood of Jesus to take control and protect us, forgive our sins. Because rationally speaking, humanly speaking, Gideon would never win if he continued working the same way he was, following his own tradition, everyone would die. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants to steal our blessing, to kill our opportunity, to destroy completely our opportunity, our chance of becoming eternal. Because the word says that the wage of sin is death, but free gift of God is eternal life. And that's the mystery that needs to be uh, unfolded. And that's what we need to leave. 
we need to discover this mystery, which is walking in the Spirit, walking in Jesus, being seen by Him, being guided by the Holy Spirit, so that we may have victories, not only in our secular life or familial life, but also in our life as a church. Our life as a church, that's important. We are here with many brethren of every type, some from Minas, from the north and from other parts in Brazil, from the south of Brazil. People that are different, they have different traditions and customs. So more than ever, we need to allow the mystery of God that is revealed in Jesus to be un 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 unveiled to us. But for this, you need to overcome what is human and take a step and Lord I want now I want to go back to the Lord and what is your will Lord will be in the first place in my life and when you do this you the Lord will turn to you so the, the Lord will say you are a valor I mean a valor you are a person of valor because you discover what was hidden what was hidden to the world and to the enemy. And the Lord has given us this great opportunity to discover that salvation is lived in the presence of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let us hear a song. Amen. Let us stand up. I'm going to have a word of adoration to the Lord.
Lord, we praise you because you are the only one worthy, Lord. We receive our adoration, our praise. I want to praise you, Lord, tonight. For everything you have done, Lord. We're thankful to you, Lord. For everything you have done in our midst, Lord. Lord, we, we don't have words, Lord. To praise you, Lord. And to say that truly, Lord, we love you, Lord. We love to serve you, Lord. We love to be part of this work, Lord. We love to be in our house, Lord. We're, we're, we're grateful to you, Lord, for so many victories, Lord, that I've been able to reach for our presence, Lord, because in your presence, Lord, we're more than victorious. That's why we want to offer you our gratitude, our praise with all our hearts. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. My brethren, the enemy, he's waiting for to find a gap on us. He counts on our failures. He's pleased with it. But the Lord, he knows that we can do it right. And the Lord is ready to look to us and to call us servants of valor. And as you turn to the Lord from the moment in which you are you act in a spiritual fashion inside, fashion inside of a house or a church, in your marriage, the way you treat your children, the way you treat your friends, your employees or your employer, the way the day you start acting in a spiritual fashion, the Lord will honor you in whatever you do. You will be a blessing. And everyone will want to be beside you. Everyone will want to be next to you. That's why tonight the Lord is getting us prepared for this so that we can have a year of 2022 that will be much better than the year 2021. Because in the areas where we have been defeated, the areas in our life where we have been, where we lost, the Lord will give us strength. The Lord will teach us and help us so that you may have the courage and boldness to say, I will be better. Because the Lord also is looking at us and he will be pleased with us. Every time that we turn to the Lord, the Lord is pleased with us. Amen. Let's pray, bring this service to a close. The Lord was showing, before we begin the service, the Lord was showing a family through a spiritual gift. The Lord was speaking about a family that is not in, 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 in a synchronous way with the time of God. They are living outside of what is the will of the Lord for that, that home. The Lord wants to do something greater for you, but you are acting many times according to your human reason or human feelings and anger and wrath. And everything that you're giving worth more to the things of this life instead of the things who, that are spiritual. But the Lord is giving you tonight a new time, a new beginning. If you do this, you will see that the blessing of the Lord is at your reach. Amen. My brethren, the Word of God, it's very easy to be preached, to be explained, but look, it needs to be believed. We cannot simply be here, 100 people, 80 people, 50 people, no, play around with being Christian. That's not our role. That's not what the Lord wants for us. And that's not what the Lord has for us. And here, we should have more churches here in Florida. More churches. Many more. More people. 
other locations for points of preaching. Yeah, why not? But many times we are lacking spirituality. To all of us, I'm, I'm including myself. Sometimes we are lacking this. So let's pray to the Lord. Lord, operate with might, delivering, opening our understanding, opening it our understanding with regards to the gospel because the gospel and salvation is lived in here the beginning of salvation you you leave it in here a group a body right but the lord has he wants much more for us and the lord also has shown through a spiritual gift another sister i'm going to read the the spiritual gift literally a woman that came here with a backpack, and inside of this backpack there were many things. There were books, messages, preachings, and at the bottom of the backpack there was the Bible, at the very bottom. Everything else came first. And it was it was very heavy backpack, and when the angel came, the angel saw this backpack, He, the angel would take the backpack, away and give her only the Bible, only the Word of God. That's all we need, only the Word of God, but a revealed Word. And she need to leave this place with the Bible in her hand. This backpack was so heavy that it would alter the way she walked. She walked with difficulty. Very well. So when we leave the gospel in a human fashion it becomes a weight but when we live in the spirit when the word of god is lived in the spirit is a relief is a light is a lamp is no longer a weight the gospel what the lord wants the voice of the lord cannot be a weight on our shoulders the gospel cannot be a show a weight for us the gospel is what brings us to god it is what allow us to have a fellowship with God, have intimacy with God, and that's what we need to understand. Amen? We need to stop being religious and live a life, live the work of the Lord in a way of, as a way of life. So here are the spiritual gifts for our teaching to the direction of the ones who felt that this gift was for them. And now let's pray, bring this after a close. Lord, receive once again this service in adoration to your name. And we ask that you may continue to speak to our hearts and that your word, Lord, may, con may generate life, may generate transformation, change, Lord, in, of understanding, change of the, the temper in the way we act, and that we may, Lord, be pliable to the operation of the Holy Spirit. Lord, cause us to grow for the honor of your name as a church, body of Christ. Lord, receive our praise that the prayers that have been made. This is a way, a way to say that we love you, Lord, and that we are hoping for the return of the Lord Jesus. Give us a week of victories, is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your name we say the great, wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, we are getting ready for the vigil. You can imagine? <laughs> Another year has passed and we are here. We should be already there, but that's but we will be there eventually. So the vigil, we, we're praying for the vigil, for the special services that we're going to have. We're going to, from this moment forward, we're going to allow time for the sisters to rehearse the, the songs, the, the praise group, the youth, also the children, the rehearse. And we're going, we're going to have quick services like the one today, isn't it true? <laughs> Very quick, so in order to give time for the brethren to the ushers and deacons here 
fast services so that it would allow time for everyone to get ready for the vigil. I would like to have a short meeting with the women. So the sisters already spoke about supper, actually, not supper, uh, 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 New Year's dinner. If the women, they are willing, we'll do something about it. And so I want to ask the, the sisters to stay after service a little bit so we can talk. Anything else, Wayne? Any other deacons and ushers? If you desire prayer, we are here at your disposal. Peace of the Lord. On a Zoom, if you need a prayer, you can make a statement and can uh, request them. We will pray with you.